We're going to look at Brown & Brown. This is an insurance company located in Florida. And what I do in my videos is I run a discounted cash flow model to identify the intrinsic value of the stock and compare it with the actual stock price and see whether it's a buy or a sell. We also look at the financial ratios of the company. So let's get started with the model. We need the market cap, which is $11.58 billion. And then we need the stock price, which is... 40 spot 85 and next we need the free cash flows and that's cash flows from operations minus capital expenditures and that's how you value a company you estimate the future free cash flows and then you discount those dollar amounts back to today's value and that's exactly what i'm doing in the video here today and next we're going to pull the net income and that's on the income statement and now I'm going to get the revenue, which is just the sales. That's also an income statement. Okay. Now we need a capital structure of the business so we know what to discount the future cash flows by. The interest expense is the interest they pay in their debt, and that's on the income statement at $64 million. And then we need to figure out how much debt they have. We'll go to the balance sheet for that. We'll go to liability section, and then current liabilities. And current debt is $55 million. That's debt due within one year. And then non-current liability shows the long-term debt of $1.5 billion. That's debt due after one year. Since interest payments are tax deductible, let's get their effective tax rate. So we'll go back to the income statement. And their income before tax is $525 million. And their income tax is $127 million. So we have their cost of debt now, which is 3.1%. Now we need the cost of equity. So we gotta get the beta for that. That's the volatility of the stock. And it's 0 0.68. 0 0.68 is a low beta. That means the stock moves about two thirds of the market. So if the market goes up 1%, this stock should go up about two thirds of a percent. Let's get their current assets. We'll go back to the balance sheet for that. And current assets are assets that can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. And it usually includes cash, accounts, receivables, and inventory, and that's $2.5 billion. We also need their current liabilities. That's also on the balance sheet on the liability section. And these are debts and payables, which are due within 12 months, and that's $2 billion. We need their equity, which is total assets minus total liabilities. That's $3.3 billion. And then we got to get their EBIT. That's earnings before interest and taxes or operating income. And that's 572 million. That's on the income statement. Now we know the weighted average cost of capital because it's a cost of debt, which is 3.1%. And they have 32% of debt in the capital structure. And their cost of equity is 7.54%. And we use a capital asset pricing model to figure that out. And they have 68% equity in that capital. And the WAC is 6.13%. And that's what we're going to use to discount to future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We did a terminal value, which is all years past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today's dollars. And we get a value of the company of $14 billion. We divide that by 283 million shares, and we get an intrinsic stock price of $51. They're trading at $41. So they're trading at a 19% discount. So it's a buy according to the model. Let's see what Simply Wall Street values the company at. So they're valuing it below what they're trading at. They're valuing a company at $31. So they're saying the stock is 31% overvalued. So they're saying it's a sell. Now let's look at the historical stock price to see where it's been traded. Looks like the stock price has been increasing quite a bit the past few years. Then it dropped the coronavirus. It's come up a little bit, but it's sitting at around $40. It looks like it peaked around $50. Let's look at their financial ratios to get some more information. I haven't done any DCF models on insurance companies on this channel, so I can't compare their ratios to other companies. So we'll just look at their ratios on a standalone basis. So their PE ratio is 29.1. That's not so great. That's a bit too high. The median in the market is 16. I like to see around 15 or below as a value investor. That's price to stock over earnings per share. Their price to sales ratio is 4.9. That's also a little high. I like to see around 2, 2.5 or less. Their price to book ratio is 3.5. That's price to stock over book value per share. That's okay. They have a good current ratio. Their current assets cover their current liabilities. They're a little low on 
ROE, that's income over equity, I like to see about 20, 25%. They're at 12%. They could cover their interest payments, no problem. Their interest coverage ratio is 9.0, that's EBIT over interest expense. And their debt is pretty good at 32%. They're not too leveraged. So let me know what you think about this company. Do you invest in insurance companies? Thanks for watching the video.